And that's the last one. Oh, hi. You caught me with my disc in my hand. You might be wondering what I'm doing, but if you look at the evidence, I think that's pretty clear. But the question remains, what if you want to do this as efficient as possible? That means minimal clicks, automation, set it, forget it, that kind of thing. So if you want to essentially scrape data off archive.org and dump everything onto hard drives without having to monitor it, I'll show you how. Physical media is basically dying a slow and dishonorable death, so with some Python scripts, let's web scrape its digital ghost. This is a script that automates the process of collecting and downloading media files from archive.org. It's a pretty useful tool because it's meant for massive file repros with hundreds of files spanning thousands of gigabytes. The script grabs one file at a time, waits for it to complete before grabbing the next one, all while working in the background and not acting suspicious. To emphasize the efficiency of this tool set, first let's compare a typical way you'd grab media from this site. Say you find a repo, you probably are able to download it in its entirely unless it's some absurdly large file size, say 800 gigabytes. Collections like this have limitations of just being able to be zipped in one transfer. Your other option would be grabbing things one at a time a la carte style, and this has a few shortcomings. It's tedious, slow, requires constant interaction to get it done, and if you're grabbing more than one file at a time, it's pretty likely the server side will throttle your download connections. So maybe we can automate this. What we need is a script to scrape the repository's contents, then let you prune what you want to grab as an option, either for quality or for disk space allocation reasons. And with that refined list, automate downloading each file one by one without being too suspicious to the server. So here's a Python script that does that. With the help of a friend, there's also an added batch file that creates a virtual environment for a Python project and installs the required Python packages listed in a requirements.txt file. That way you're grabbing the libraries that just work and you don't have to worry about version numbers. I'll just throw the code up on screen and here's kind of a flow bullet list chart of how this works. Pause it if you want details. Before we get into some real soak tests, I do want to emphasize the step to edit the .csv file right after that first HTML scrape. So let's go over two big examples of why you'd want to use this script and why you want to do the editing before you start grabbing downloads. This Dragon Ball repro has two file formats for each episode, a .mp4 with Japanese audio and no subtitles, and a .mkv with two audio tracks and a subtitle track. The latter is what I want, so I'm going to skip the .mp4 files, so I'll mark the rows that I want to skip in the .csv, filter this list, and then delete them in one big chunk. I'll save this and continue running the script. And a few hours later, I have everything I need. Much faster than clicking on one episode, one by one, manning a computer to do this. Another example is the complete USA ROM set of GameCube games. I know, kind of specific. This is going to be the real soak test. Let's scrape the HTML, and here's the full ROM set. There's a modest portion of shovelware on the GameCube, and I'm going to mark the titles I'm not interested in so we can reduce this collection from the normal 820 gigabytes to 640 gigabytes. That's about a 22% reduction, and then I'll start the scraper. This ran without issue for 12 and a half hours, grabbing about 429 ISOs, that's like almost 600 gigs, before throwing a disconnect error. I'm not sure what was the cause, probably the server kicked me off, but recovery is easy. Just delete the partial file where the disconnect started, restart the scraper, edit the CSV to pick up where we left off,
and another three-ish hours later and we're done. I did do a validity test earlier to make sure the request method of grabbing these files in chunks would not break the ISOs. So here's a spot check of one ISO game running on the GameCube and another spot check on the Wii running a GameCube game. I think it's working. So that's the application and the use, but let's talk about some bugs and, you know, and room for further improvement. There are known bugs in the code. The script that calculates the total download size is just an integer value pulled out of the HTML. Never mind, this is fixed. When you're grabbing repos in the gigabytes, this is just a sanity calculation to let you know, should I split this over two or more hard drives or can I stuff it in one? Now for some details on archive.org's directory structure. The scraper can only do one directory level. If you find a repo with another folder in a level deeper, that's gonna be skipped. Most of the troubleshooting is this URL link. Everything hinges on being able to scrape the HTML and extract the direct download URLs. This is done by looking at the TR tag and extracts whatever's in the href attribute. That chunk is then appended into the base URL, and then we have the direct download URL. If the HTML does not present its contents in this format, the script won't work. This script was written to scrape inside that show all directory, which is one level deeper than the landing page on archive.org. So as long as the web page matches this format and the tags and all that stuff, the script won't break yet. I'm showing the download directory on screen because opposed to the landing page, you have to make sure you get this correct. Remember, you gotta go one level deeper past the landing page in the show all download URL directory. Otherwise, the script will error out. This script will only work for repositories marked as public. So this Dreamcast repo I keep showing in the A and B role, well, that's a private repo. You cannot scrape it with this tool since the tool operates with public access credentials only. For private repos, you have to log into archive.org with an account and access those links. If you don't, the links are gonna be hidden from the HTML if you try and browse publicly. I don't know how to handle this with Python, so if you know, let me know. Don't forget, you might need to put a slash at the end of the base URL you're pasting. Never mind, this is fixed. I also added the download speed just to remind you this will take hours, if not days. So if you want to run this, you need Python, and things just work best if you install Python from the Microsoft Store page. You can verify if you've done this by typing where Python in your command line. This code is open source. Hopefully you find some use to it. I'm not gonna share the URLs because we'll just probably spam and break stuff. So go on, go dig, and scrape to your heart's content. Thanks for watching. Downloading films is stealing. If you do it, you will face the consequences.